your business is in sync with LiveSync. This webinar is powered by LiveSync Accounting and Zero Accounting Software. Introducing Attorney Dexter Destajo. As a Zero practitioner and a Zero champion, this is one of those features in Zero that I really uh, love about Zero, no? Because I'm not sure with other accounting system right now, but um, when I was starting with cloud accounting, I don't see any cloud solutions that does have a fixed asset module. And then I was very happy to, to see and to know that Zero actually has a fixed asset module in its system. So where do we see that? There's a fixed asset module in your system here. Now, if your accounting system does not have a fixed asset system the poor accountant what it does it, it will create a lapsing schedule in its excel or in paper and then manually creates its own simple register in excel and then calculate the depreciations accordingly because normally this lapsing schedule would be required during your audit procedure your external auditor so with the fixed asset basically zero just solve us this one particular data entry that we're going uh, instead of using outside system like excel and paper now we can integrate the fixed asset uh, management in our zero system so as an introduction to fixed asset okay the access to fixed asset is again also limited to the advisor and standard user okay all other users cannot manage fixed asset. Only standard and advisor access to zero can actually manage this particular module. Now, to start with your inventory, uh, when you are setting up uh, zero and you're setting up fixed asset, because we did not cover this in our setup, we need to act in at the beginning. We're going to do a, a setup of our fixed asset at the beginning. So. The first thing that we need to do is deciding on the start date of our depreciation. So in our, in our system here, I would want to use the start date, start date as July beginning of the year, okay, as a selection. So these are your options. So normally because we're doing calendar year, so the first month of the calendar year would be your start date. I would save that and then we will have already as a start date. Now remember, last week we created a, a sample purchase of laptop last week, and then this is already in our system, no? But I'm already jumping to that. The next step is to actually set up, okay, of fixed assets. So to do this, we go to settings here. By the way, you can also go here to advanced, and then you have fixed asset settings, it's the same. So what are we setting up here? in the fixed asset we need to set up the asset types and the related accounts when we are going to dispose the asset later because you can actually do disposal transaction in the fixed asset module of zero so in our company we would have four types of fixed assets okay i would go to our chart of accounts and then you would know that we have to set up the chart of accounts that is related to the fixed asset first. So in our example, I've set up office equipment, then set up also the accumulated depreciation, computer equipment, the furniture, and their respective accumulated depreciation accounts. And when we are setting up this, we need to make sure that it is a fixed asset set up. Okay, just a recall, you have to select this particular account type so that this particular chart of account will be linked in our fixed asset. So every time we input a bill and then we use a fixed asset account, 
this would automatically link us to our fixed asset module, particularly in our fixed asset register. So here I would want to set up my first type. So then I would set up called computer. Okay. And then I would identify because I've set this up already as computer equipment as an asset account. Accumulated depreciation would be accumulated depreciation of computer, and then I'll use depreciation expense. Now, if you would want to separate different depreciation expense per asset type, you can do that. No, so you just have to create chart of account separately for depreciation, hyphen, computer equipment. Okay. For, but for this example, I would want to use only one depreciation expense in my PNL. Now, then it would ask us also the default of, of the depreciation method we are using for this particular equipment. So here, I would use a straight line method. So as you notice, all acceptable standards of depreciation are act and managing fixed assets are actually as to your selection. But normally we do a straight line. And if this asset has no depreciation, you just select no depreciation. For now, we select straight line. What is our method of calculating? So is it actual this or full month? What is the difference? The difference is that whether if it is whether it's a 30 or 31 days each month, it will calculate the same amount of depreciation. So technically it will just divide. If it is one year useful life, it would be divided by 12 directly but if it is actual day so what would happen is your if you have a useful life of one year it divides to 365 and then it calculates respectively as to how many months on that particular month so when you're looking at a pnl on a horizontal level you would see that each month would have a different amounts of depreciation compared to a full month where you see at the same amount all throughout the month now normally what is being acceptable in the middle east is any of them, but you have to disclose this to your auditor. But normally what we do is actual days. Next would be, how are you calculating your depreciation? Are you using rate method, let's say 5% per year? Or are you using useful life? So I would say for computer, I would normally use three years. Then I save that particular setting. Next is I add another setting for my office furniture. Okay, the asset would be, you have to map that to a particular asset, to a particular depreci accumulated depreciation. And again, this is the depreciation account. This time I'm using still the straight line, using actual days, and I'm still using three years as my useful life. I'm adding another one for motor vehicle. So I'm doing motor vehicle because this company is buying a motor vehicle. Then I use motor vehicles and an asset and its respective accumulated depreciation and then the expense account for depreciation. Still straight line, average days, and then I'm doing three months. Okay, now I have set up this. Now, why do we have to set up at the being the asset type? It is because we would be able to, all our depreciation policy will be uniform across all asset types. So maybe in our motor vehicle, instead of three years, we're using actually seven years as a useful life for that. So then every time we register an asset for motor vehicle, the default useful life would be seven years. Here, you can actually select, I would say, other revenue. And then I also do other revenue here. You can create a separate income accounts for this. And then I would say general expenses, or you would do other expenses, up to you. No? So, but for our setup, this is what we are going to do here. Done with our setting up. Now, the next step would actually now going through with our first asset registration. We created this particular entry last week. Okay, another supplier, we're buying a computer, we paid this. Now, if we're inputting a purchase of an asset and then in our chart of accounts, we use a fixed asset account. What it does, zero will trigger a draft registration of this asset. So in our fixed asset here, in our dashboard, you would see basically your fixed asset registration. So 
this is the draft of asset that needs to be registered, meaning this is they are still not registered. And then these are the list of assets that are being registered and the assets that are already disposed. Here's a question. Why do we need to register the asset in the fixed asset? The reason being is that this would allow us to apply the default asset type settings and then apply the depreciation policy for each of these asset items. If you are not registering them, then in calculating depreciation, this will not be included. So to make sure that this fixed asset in our will calculate properly the depreciation for each month, for each item, for each fixed asset item, we need to register that. Okay? Now, assuming I would hit depreciation here and without registering anything, okay, zero does not give me anything to depreciate. Nothing. See? Because I have not registered. So in order for zero to calculate depreciation, there must be registered fixed asset. Now, like I said, when you initiate a purchase of asset, when you hit a fixed asset account in your bill, it creates a draft here. And the next step you need to do is to register it. How do you register this? Very simple. Uh, zero would uh, already initially set up for you the detail, initial details. Um, the fixed asset number, you can change this if you would want. The warranty expiry, it will also, you can also select a warranty expiry, a serial number for this particular asset. And then this is where it's very important. Selecting now or allocating the particular asset type applicable to the laptop. So laptop being a computer equipment, we select computer equipment. And once we select that, zero auto populates the default of that asset type. This is the account asset account, the depreciation account, and the uh, accumulated depreciation account, and the depreciation expenses. And because in our bill, we have selected branch one and department two, zero automatically populates these tracking fields. Um, normally, I would just put this, the details here. Maybe if you would want, you, if you have a proper registry, you would want to know who is, the, who is the supplier, model number, the things that needs to be noted on this particular asset, you can put all this in the description. Now, setting up a newly registered fixed asset item would require you, uh, will ask you when do you want to start the depreciation. So here I would want to start the depreciation at the date of my purchase, right? And take note, this already pre-populates for you as this was the system settings for the computer equipment asset. Now, if you want to see where is this particular register is coming from, you will see C original bill. When you try to click, I, what I would do, would, I would do a right click and open a new bill, a new window, and then it shows me that this was the reference. It is important because you would want that your zero accounting ledger must match to your fixed asset register. If this does not match, then it creates a problem of reconciliation. And then what would happen is that you are depreciating a separate list of asset while your fixed asset ledger is showing you a separate list. What is key here is that your register or fixed asset list would be the same as your fixed asset ledger. I will show you that shortly. So now I would be able to register this, okay? Now I would go to a particular report in zero called fixed asset report, no? So I go to a report here that I would be able to see fixed asset reports, right? So I can check my fixed asset reconciliation whether they are matching. So here I would see my balance sheet ledger has a debit of 1,500 and my asset register is 1,500. So then there is no difference and therefore your assets, your ledger asset and your register is the same. You could validate that in your balance sheet right now. So your balance sheet is showing you a computer equipment of this value, 1,500 with one entry only, right? So that is your ledger. And then your register is showing you also one registered item of one five. So then your register and your asset ledger are reconciled, then you don't have a problem in this case. Okay, now let's try creating additional assets. 
So I would want to create one particular asset. Let's say I would buy mobile, no? So I'd say Max Mobile, a new supplier. I bought today and then I would have an invoice of one, three, five, six. And then I would have a mobile phone, right? And then I would put this, that I bought this as also to 1,700. And then I use a computer equipment, no? If that is, then you can have all other equipment as well to you, but I'm using for this purpose, I'm using this. So there is a bot on this, and then I'm applying this to branch was an expense, and then also on a purchase for department one. And then on top of that, I was also, okay, I've done that already, approve, okay? So take note, once I approve this, your asset registry would now update with one draft here. Yep, so one draft. Let's do another one. Let's use another one. Let's say I bought office furniture. So furniture Dubai. And then again, I would do office furniture. And then this value was 3000. And then I'll use furniture again. I'm triggering an asset account here. Again, this is branch one and then department one approve as i approve the bill the fixed asset is also adding the draft registers right so i have two now and then let me add one more for a purchase of a vehicle so you say i would buy from toyota and then this is a van high eights for example and we're buying a low end, let's say it's 80,000. And then we say motor vehicle, right? Again, I'm triggering a fixed asset because if I'm not using a fixed asset, nothing will happen in our draft register. Again, this is for branch one and then for department one. I'll approve this. You can do attachment if you want. So now in my, in my zero fixed asset, I would have now three drafts of fixed assets here. That allows me to register. So what I would do before initiating any depreciation for the month, let's say in June, make sure all draft registers must be fully registered. Otherwise, they will not be included in your calculation. And the effect to that, it creates an error wherein your registry is different from your asset ledger. And if you're doing that, then your depreciation, your accumulated depreciation, and your fixed asset account in the balance sheet are understated, okay? So you have to make sure before hitting a depreciation, all pending registrations are already been done. So let's do one by one, mobile phone. Okay, then I select again here, a computer equipment, puts all the default and I say this date. Okay, then I'll do the second one for my furniture. This time I assign them properly to the office furniture, asset type, and then it is also on this date. And then I also use the same default. And then finally, I will have to register the high ACE. And then I use motor vehicle. And as you notice, it's putting the default of seven years and then the method of this. Now we are all done. And if we are ready now to depreciate, the only thing you need to do is to click this. Sorry, I'm jumping too fast. Okay, let us look at your balance sheet for now. This is now your balance sheet showing perfectly, right? And then let's look at your fixed asset register. Okay, it's all zero. There is no variance. Now, if you see this and there is no more variance, then this would tell you that you are ready now to create your depreciation for that particular month. So I have zero draft. My balance sheet are all recorded properly. My register is properly aligned without variance. Then I'm ready to depreciate. So if, let's say today is June 30, and then you would want to run now the depreciation. So I would do click the run depreciation, but because we are doing this the first time, right? It will give us a default date of January 31. Since we don't have a transaction from January to May, I would jump immediately to June 30. So what would happen is zero gives us now the amount it has calculated for the respective asset type. So this is the amount that needs to be, the amount of depreciation that needs to be recorded in your ledger. 
uh, what I would do is I would just confirm this. Okay? Then that's done. I made a depreciation. My last depreciation entry is June 30. So let's say now is June, July 31. I can do that again. My default now is June 31. I can confirm that once more. So now my July 31. If, for example, there's a problem, you hit, you already create, you run the depreciation already. And then after doing a run depreciation, you realize that there are some errors in your ledger and in your register. Okay? And you want to fix that. So the question, how can I edit the depreciation that I have already generated? Okay? Now take note before doing that, when I did that already, you would notice that our fixed asset now would show up the accumulated depreciation as a contra account. Okay? It calculates everything properly. And then in our register as well, it would show you that in June 30, it perfectly aligns as well. There is still no variance because the accumulated depreciation is showing the same as of your balance sheet and your register. Now, going back to the problem. Later, you would realize that I have, you have committed errors and you already hit the bottom July 31 depreciation. What do you do? Very basic and very simple. You click run depreciation again. Obviously, it will tell you August 31. But you see this bottom rollback depreciation. You click here and then it allows you to go back to which depreciation you would want to, to change. So let's say I want to change July and June because I've done July and I have an error in June. Then I go to July 1, okay? I save that. And then what would happen is in my, my last depreciation now is March 31. And then there is no entry in my accumulated depreciation. And then my balance sheet will tell me it also reversed that. So then once you have done that, then you can fix where is the error. Maybe the error is in the entry. You check on the register. You fix the register. Or maybe it's in the wrong bill. Maybe the bill has an error. You fix the bill. Okay. Now, once you're ready and you fix that, you can then again do uh, run the depreciation properly, knowing that there is no more errors. So then what I would do, I run the depreciation to June 30. And then my balance sheet will be updated. And then my profit and loss, where's my profit and loss here? Okay. Would have a depreciation entry in the system under branch one okay now another report that we would want to know is also a report called depreciation expense report now normally this is what we call also as a lapsing schedule so the depreciation schedule would tell us actually the details of that particular in the fixed asset item what is going on as of June, as of the start of depreciation, the start date to June 30, which is your balance sheet now. So it will tell us now that these are your assets. This was the original historical cost, which is cost. And then your amount depreciated so far with this period is this amount. And then your accumulated depreciation is this amount. And then as of June 30, your book value would be this amount per asset line. You would be able so. If per asset type, this is your book value. If this is your if per asset line, you will see this value. This same amount would show up also in your fixed asset reconciliation. Would be same, right? So your asset would be 316, 2967, and, and 79 respectively. Then this would also show up 79, 2967, and 3165 respectively. Now, that is how you process fixed asset and manage the registers in zero. Let's talk about limitation, okay? As you notice, when we create a bill and we use immediately the first time in our entry a fixed asset, it automatically adds as a draft in our fixed asset. The problem is if we, for example, once we have approved the bill and then somehow we said, oh, it was an error. So let's say I've created a bill And then let's say another supplier, for example, okay? And then I say paper here. And then by accident, I use the account, uh, let's say this is 200. And I use computer equipment, okay, branch one. 
branch 2. By accident, instead of doing paper office expense, I used by accident a uh, fixed asset when I was approving this. When I approve this, as I told you already, this will be adding in our draft, right? However, we realize that this is a wrong entry, right? So when you look at that, the draft, there's a paper. Why are we going to register a paper? It should not be registered because it's not a fixed asset transaction. It is an outright expenditures for the month. So what do you do? You realize later that you were wrong. So what you do is you edit this bill, right? And then you edit the bill by changing this to office expenses. I don't know if, okay, let's say expense, what the expense I have here. Office expense. Now I'm editing an approved bill. Take note, I am editing an approved bill by changing a fixed asset account to an expense account. I update the bill. Here's the question. Does the update also update the asset register? The answer is no. So this is where the risk of error will, will be very common, okay? If we are editing a bill from a fixed asset to an unfixed asset account, your draft here will not change, okay? It will not edit, okay? Now, if you commit the mistake of registering this, what would happen? And then you would run a depreciation because you have registered this erroneous transaction. What would happen? Your fixed asset reconciliation would be wrong. Why? Because your asset register would be registering more book value, more accumulated depreciation, but your balance sheet will be different amount because we have not, we have edited already the ledger account and expense account. So then you have to fix that. So what is the limitation here? The limitation is when you are editing an originally approved bill with a fixed asset to a, an expense account, that changes will not affect here, okay? So what do you do? Because this is an, an unnecessary uh, bill registry, you just have to delete this entry. Do not register this, just delete that entry. Then you are ready. There are also a case wherein, for example, I would copy this, and then initially I recorded, this is, uh, let's say, I would say this is a printer, right? And then the printer, I initially recorded this as an office expense by error, okay? I'm approving this as an expense account. And but actually, this is wrong. It should be 2,000. So small. Let me edit the amount. The value of the printer is 2,000. But what would happen is when we inputting, when we're entering this the first time we're using an expense account, when it is supposed to be a fixed asset account. So I'm using an, uh, an, an expense account, okay? If you have this error, normally I just leave that zero so that zero would update to turn it on. Done. So here I approve an, an expense 2000 at an expense. So what would happen in your register? There's nothing. Why? Because we did not use a fixed asset account. So nothing here. Now later you realize that this was wrong. You edit this and then change this to computer. Here's the question. If I'm updating the account, would that also now reflect an entry in your draft register? The answer is no. Right? Nothing. So what is your action here? Okay. You cannot anymore, because you're updating here, it will never add anything on its own automatically by zero. But what you can do now is set it the asset manually. So click the new asset, okay? Copy this item. You're now adding the printer, and then the purchase price is 2,000, and then you're selecting computer, so you're setting this up on your own now without linking this to a bill okay so take note there's nothing here see bill no there's nothing here you know, because you are registering this for the first time so that is how you solve it because when you're updating it will not automatically update your register again when you're updating an account it will not affect the entry in your register you have to either correct it or create a new asset. 
And if you are not doing it properly, you will have a problem with your fixed asset reconciliation. And therefore, you are understating your fixed asset and your accumulated depreciation in your balance sheet. And your depreciation is also overstated in your profit and loss. So what is the difference of what I just did now? If you look at the office furniture, zero would provide us a link to the bill. See, this one. But if we're adding it as a new asset manually in the register, because you can do that, just I showed you earlier, okay? So let's say printer, right? This registration does not give you a link, see? You can still do, all do the options, and then you can still do original. So that is how fixed asset is being managed in zero. Very, very good tool. It saves a lot of time rather than you know updating your Excel. And then it helps us also at the end of the month by checking fixed asset reconciliation. Okay, so that is fixed asset.